Welcome to this session. In this session, we're going to be talking about a maneuver. I, I call it a dead stop, just for lack of a better name. The way this maneuver works is that you fly towards an obstacle. You pitch back to arrest your forward motion and throttle up. And then there's any number of other ways you can exit the maneuver uh, that, that are interesting. Uh, this maneuver has a lot of potential for acro flight. Uh, it's kind of unexpected uh, if you're not used to seeing it. And also it, it has some potential to get you out of a crash if you're, if you're flying right at something uh, and you don't want to hit it. Being able to stop dead uh, is a good skill to have. Now oftentimes before I had you start on a new maneuver, I would say to practice it in an open field or something, kind of get a feel for it, get it down, and then do it near an obstacle where you have a greater chance of crashing. But I'm not going to say that for this one, uh, because in this case, this move is actually much harder to do uh, in an open field. And the reason for that is that, especially if you have camera up tilt, and the more camera up tilt you have, the worse this is, when you pitch back to arrest your forward motion, you're just going to be staring at the sky. And you're going to have almost no visual frame of reference for you know, where, where you're drifting, whether you're gaining or losing altitude, uh, any of that, or when you've stopped, any of that stuff. So this is one of those rare moves that's actually easier to do uh, if you have an obstacle right in front of you. And the idea is that you're definitely, definitely not going to hit the obstacle. And looking up at that tree or building or whatever it is you're looking up at, is that's going to be your visual frame of reference for what you need to do, what you need to adjust in order to make the maneuver work. Okay, so let's break this down then. You're flying towards the obstacle, and as you approach the obstacle, you begin to pitch back, and you drop your throttle. I always drop my throttle when doing sort of adjustments to my attitude, because I want to get the attitude right before I start pulling my copter around. And you have a, you have a, a half a second or so when you drop your throttle before you start to really fall or gravity takes over, you get really discombobulated. So you drop the throttle and you pitch back. Now you begin to raise the throttle to arrest your forward motion and you adjust the throttle so that you do not gain or lose any altitude. You want to keep your altitude consistent. And this is exactly the same as what you would do in forward flight uh, when you pitch forward to go faster. You need to raise the throttle, you need to adjust the throttle to keep your altitude consistent. You're doing the exact same thing here, you're just doing it pitched back instead of pitched forward and using the trees as your reference point. So you can see here that I'm backing away without gaining or losing any altitude. And then as I get further away, I can level out again and do whatever else I was going to do. A common problem that I have when practicing this is that I'm going too fast and I'm going to fly straight into the tree. The answer to that is to pitch back more and throttle up more. If you're not pitched back enough, you'll throttle up and you'll start to gain altitude and you could climb right into the tree branches. So it's a, just the same basic management of pitch and throttle that you use when flying forward. Same principles apply. You're just doing it backwards instead of forwards. So when you first start practicing this move, I would say practice it just trying to back out at exactly the same altitude that you went in. And of course, you're going to want to make sure that you're clear behind you and you don't have anything you're going to crash into. But just back away without gaining or losing any altitude. As you get more confident with this maneuver, though, you can start doing more interesting things. Like here, I've gone straight up out of the move. Uh, it, since you've arrested your forward motion, you can be confident that then if you level out, you can go straight up. And also, you can use the tree as a visual reference or whatever your obstacle is. You can use it as a visual reference for whether you're going straight up or whether you're backing away or going forward. Yep, back up, in and back out again in and back out again. There's that moment when you pitch back and the copter is just standing still where you want to find your throttle point where you're neither gaining nor losing altitude and then just let it come back. Here's a bunch of examples there. I lost a little altitude there and then had to gain it. Gained a little altitude there. there. How long you hold the pitch back and how whether you level out again, that all is up to you. You can just play with it. Lost a lot of altitude there. Oh yeah, I was worried about backing into the fence on that one. So 
it's going to take some practice, but it's, it's not a complicated mover, maneuver, and it's not asking you to do anything that you have never done before. It's just different and a little unexpected. Let's take a look at some of the things that you could do with this maneuver to do some interesting acro style flight. So in this one, I'm going to dead stop under the tree, kind of arc upwards, and throw a little loop in or flip in for good measure. Dead stop, and straight up. Climb out, and then look down, and fall. Again, this is a really great move for setting up a straight up climb out, which then is a great move for setting up a straight down drop. Arc backwards while pitching forward, and turn away. That one wasn't wasn't a great dead stop. I kind of messed up that entry. What really happened there was that I didn't have enough forward speed, and since I didn't have enough forward speed, I wasn't able to get that kind of skidding, hovering stop. As soon as I pitched back, the copter stopped moving and started moving backwards. So you need to carry some forward speed into this so you get that one moment where you're kind of floating. Here's a sort of arc backward with a roll. I think this is true of a lot of acro moves, that if you try and do them slowly, they don't really work. See, that didn't really work very well there. I didn't get much of a stop before I climbed out, because I wasn't going very fast going into the move. If you don't have a lot of speed going into the move, you won't be able to get that nice hover. There's a little backing up turn. All kinds of interesting ways you can play with this. But it all starts with that ba very basic move of coming in and backing straight back out again, exactly as you entered, without gaining or losing altitude. I'm going to give you one more example of a, of a slightly different thing I played with today, just as another uh, example of how you might incorporate this into your flying. So in this case, I'm flying uh, through this gap in the trees, or, or underneath this gap in the trees, and then I'm pitching back to sort of stop and look up at the trees. Uh, I don't feel 100% confident backing out of this one, so you'll see that the next thing I do is I just pitch forward and fly out of it. Uh, but it's it's just another example of how this move might fit into your flying and if I was feeling a little braver I might do something. I don't know. I might climb up out of there I'm just not feeling a hundred percent confident about where my clear flight lines are and since I can't see where I'm going If I try to back out uh, I'm not doing that yet, but with a little bit of practice and a little bit of uh, getting ready uh, You'll probably come up with something cool if you watch Maddie stunts that's M-A-T-T-Y-S-T-U-N-T-Z, I believe I've spelled it right, I'll have to double check. Uh, if you watch his YouTube channel, he has some awesome moves that he does where he basically ends up flying backwards at the end of a flip or, or a loop. And, uh, and a, in, in his first video where he introduces the move, he shows some of the practice and prep work they did, basically getting um, a mental picture of what the, the sight line looked like when he was going to pass through the gap in the trees backwards. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a ton of practice anytime you're flying where you can't see where you're going. So um, just another way that this can be incorporated. And, and I hope that as you play with this and as I play with this type of thing more, uh, we can get to a, a spot where we're not afraid of flying in a direction that we can't see and open the door to some really, really cool acro moves. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy flying.